SRE, observability, automation is key to be free, don't you see, it's a better way now. Welcome to Performance Time, I'm Stephen Townsend, and this is the show about performance engineering and site reliability. Today I'm probably going to bite off more than I can chew. I'm going to try and explain Docker. Now, many people in IT know, in theory, what containers are and what Docker is. But having spent a lot more time with Docker over the last couple of months, I thought I'd attempt to define and explain it as simply as possible. One of the things I see quite a lot is a confusion between Docker and Kubernetes. I'm going to cover what Kubernetes is in the next episode, and that will probably clear that one up. But today we're going to focus on Docker, and to do that we first have to define what containers are. Now most people understand virtual machines, or VMs these days. We have some physical hardware, and then a virtualization layer on top. In other words, a hypervisor. Now the hypervisor creates a whole bunch of virtual computers on top, which all appear like they're physical computers but they actually use the underlying physical hardware. So VMs virtualize hardware. Each VM has its own operating system and behaves effectively like a physical computer, for the most part. There's many benefits to using virtual machines. Because they are effectively just data, just files, we can pick them up, move them to a new physical host, back them up, duplicate them, in general, managing VMs provides opportunities and efficiencies that we don't get with physical hardware. So why go further? Why containers? VMs are inefficient. Because every VM has its own independent operating system installed, it has a large disk and memory footprint. Because VMs are effectively computers, they have potentially a whole variety of software installed on them. This can create dependencies. So if you change one of the bits of software on a VM, it is a potential breaking change in all the other components of that VM. So now we come to containers. So whereas a VM virtualizes hardware, containers virtualize an operating system. So we have one host, one operating system. And then we have a container management layer, which can spin up multiple containers on top of that. Each container has a virtual operating system. As far as the container is concerned, it is its own independent computer running its own operating system. But it's a virtual operating system. It's actually sharing the same operating system as a bunch of other containers. Now, containers actually do contain parts of an operating system. For example, they each have their own independent file system, but they share the same underlying operating system kernel. So... Because containers don't need to have a whole operating system bundled within them, they are smaller, they perform better, and because we're virtualizing at the operating system level, containers are more portable than VMs. Containers generally only encapsulate one service or app, along with its required dependencies. Because of this, containers are more independent than VMs. If you change or update one container, or container image, it's not going to affect the other containers running on the same host. One more thing about containers before we talk about Docker. If you're familiar with object-orientated programming, you'll know the relationship between a class and an object. A class is like a blueprint of something we want to execute as code. To actually run the code, we need to use that class, or that blueprint, to instantiate an object. So it's the object which actually executes the code. The class is just the blueprint on how to create an object in the first place. The same paradigm exists for containers, but rather than classes and objects, we have container images and containers. A container image is like a class. It's the blueprint definition of a specific type of container we're going to want to create. One container image can be used to spin up as many containers of that type as you want. Another part of object orientation that containers use is inheritance. You can build up container images in layers. For example, you could have a base container image which has all of the Linux components which you need, such as Alpine, 
which is a popular uh, base image. Then you might use that and inherit from that to create another base container image which has a Node.js implementation, for example. Then we might create another container image which inherits from the previous one. And that one has our actual Node.js application on it. By building up our container images in layers like this, it supports reusability of each of those layers. And it also means that we can modify or update one layer at a time. So that's what containers are. What's Docker? Docker is the most popular container management platform in the world. It consists of two main components. First of all, the Docker engine. The Docker engine creates and runs containers. Then there's the Docker store, also called Docker Hub, or a container registry, or an image repo, which is a library of container images that can be retrieved to be instantiated into containers. Docker Hub is the public-facing image repo that is available to anyone, but many organizations host their own internal image repos to protect their IP. The basic workflow or build process is to retrieve a container image from a container registry, then get the Docker engine to spin that up into as many containers as we need. So where does Kubernetes come in? Docker is really good at managing containers, but what about a very large group of containers running across many hosts, also called a cluster. Docker does actually provide tooling to help you manage large collections of containers using Docker Swarm. But for whatever reason, the industry has decided that Kubernetes is the standard way of managing container clusters. We'll talk about Kubernetes next time. So where to from here? If you want to learn more about Docker, I highly recommend tracking down some hands-on training where you get to install Docker, create your own container images, use them to create containers, and monitor and manage the state of those containers. If you have access to LinkedIn Learning or Pluralsight, both have excellent courses that I'd highly recommend. Whatever training you do or platform you are working on, Docker Desktop is a fantastic tool that makes it very easy to work with containers on your own laptop or computer. A few years ago, I had a go at learning Docker, but I really struggled with technical challenges at that time. But I have to say that things have come a long way since then. The installation process for Docker Desktop is extremely simple. I've only scratched the surface of Docker and containers. I'm hardly an expert, but I do hope that this has provided some kind of clear explanation of containers and Docker. Next time, as I said, we'll be talking about Kubernetes a bit more and how we can use that to manage clusters of containers. Shout out to Gwen DeLeon who gave me the idea for the new theme song. And as always, I'll see you next time on Performance Time. <laughs>